Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. So we all have these odd jobs we need to do around the tank and I thought you might be interested in the kinds of things I have to do and sort of little tips about maintenance and how to get things done. Sometimes we just have to get on with it. Starting with the overflowing Catomorpha algae, it is uh, b bursting out of my sketchy little Cato corral. So I take this red colander and I put the Cato in there so that I can rinse the Cato in the return chamber to release any pods that might be living in here, or at least try and get most of them. And this also stirs up a lot of detritus that collects in the Cato, and that's a good thing too. Um, it's actually kind of a food source for coral, so it's no biggie if it does get into the return chamber and travels to the tank. Most of it will get stopped though by the skimmer and by the filter pad that I have on the baffle between this chamber and the return chamber. So I got a good whack of it out and this doesn't look like much remaining but it will double or triple in size in no time. And now it's time for the algae scrubber. I looked at this about two weeks ago so I've known for two weeks that it does need a harvest because even then I could have cleaned it but I haven't looked at it at all since then because I just haven't had time. The bottom of the screen is white because that's the part that's in the water. <laughs> and check this out, <laughs> the other side here is ridiculous. I'm not quite sure why it grows so much more on this side. Maybe it has something to do with the water flow, but there's definitely enough here that needs to be removed. And here we are at the kitchen sink. It's just a simple matter of removing the end cap and then sliding the screen out. There's a slot in the bottom of that pipe. Um, you can see there's a fair amount of algae on here and it's very, very dense and thick. And if you've ever wondered what exactly the algae is like that gets grown in these things, it's almost kind of spongy. It has a substance to it. It's not like hair algae, or at least I should say what I grow in my algae scrubber is like this all the time. I've never really had slime or um, uh, extensive amounts of hair algae. It's almost always this stuff which is very very spongy and almost like turf algae. So I just have this frame from a filter cartridge laying around and it's what I usually use to, to scrape the, the algae off of the screen. The idea here is not to get the screen completely clean because if you do it'll take a while for the algae to re-establish itself. It's just a matter of taking off the bulk of what has grown. And then the rest of the algae scrubber just gets rinsed off, scrubbed off with a brush, whatever you need to do to clean off any accumulated algae or gunk that's anywhere on it. I use this hard nylon scrubber pad to get stubborn gunk off. It works very well on plastic and glass. And the tray section also grows a lot of algae and that also needs to come off. There's also usually a little bit of crud in the red end cap and I'll get that all cleaned up while I'm at it. And then everything gets reassembled. Totally lapsed time for the entire cleaning process is somewhere around 10 minutes. I was getting a lot of gurgling noises from the overflow and I suddenly realized the teeth were really clogged up and obviously this was impacting the free flow of water into the back and there were some issues. The overflow level was very, very low and I don't know, it took me months to realize that this was happening and um, I learned something from this. So now I clean the teeth regularly. I found an absolutely perfect tool on Amazon a little while ago. It's a set of cleaning brushes. There's a link in the description if you're interested in looking it up. One of them is the perfect size for doing this job. I did try to remove the panel um, that holds the teeth because it is supposed to be removable, but I was unable to do it and I did not want to force it and maybe risk breaking it. So I decided the next best thing was just to leave it in place, get one of these brushes and clean it um, from the tank. I realize this puts dirty stuff into the tank, but it was the only option I really had and well, the dirty stuff will get skimmed out or caught in the filter pads. Yeah. 
It wouldn't be reefing without the inconvenience of a sudden leak in your saltwater tub in your mixing station. So that all had to be ripped apart and re-siliconed and dried and yeah. So I also took the opportunity to rip apart the pump and do some maintenance. Now it's working perfectly, so it's a good thing I noticed the water on the floor when I did. I am frequently up to my armpits in water in my aquarium, much like a lot of you are, I'm sure. And so this is my favorite accessory. And since I got these, I don't hesitate any longer doing it. I don't put this off. I go right in and I do the work I need to do in the tank. My snails have disco parties overnight. And the first thing I look for every morning is to see what they have knocked off from where. So I'm constantly in and out of the tank doing repairs to put back what they knock over, to move things around to better spots and that sort of thing. I've also put a link in the description to these if you're interested. Today I actually need to go into the tank and do some repair work. So I've got my big long gloves out and these are great except that the hands are pretty much useless. They don't fit at all. So I put an exam glove over top of the hand and I get an elastic and put that on the other glove and take it all the way up to my shoulder. And that way it won't slip off as I'm moving around with them. Then I take another elastic for the wrist and it stops water from getting inside the glove. It also means that I'm dragging less water out of the tank when I pull my hand out. Eventually water does seep in there, but it takes quite a while. Here's the putty I'm going to use for the job today. It's a prize that I won in a contest for JD Reefs 4220. And this is great stuff. I've been buying more ever since I saw how good it was when I received the stuff from him. I'm also using reef glue because my process is now two part. Make the putty, glue the coral to the putty, and then glue the putty to the rock. And that's the only way I've found to thwart the snails from knocking stuff off of everywhere. So last night's party resulted in the chalice coming off the rocks. Uh, this little Acropora, which I'm really trying to nurture along, I want to put that back up where it belongs, and also this bit of Palithoa. It's on a frag plug and it was completely knocked off where it was sitting. I pulled the coral out of the tank and put it in some tank water just while I'm getting the putty ready. Once the putty's ready, I will put glue on it and then I'll put the coral into the glue and wrap the putty around it. Then I let it sit for maybe a minute or so, then put some more glue on the bottom of the putty and then take it over to the tank and put it in place, in the place that I've decided I'm gonna put it. Um, this has worked really well so far. I haven't had any fails from this process since I started doing it. So I'm pretty sure gradually over the course of the next little while, every single thing I've ever glued in there, unless it's already based out or encrusting, is probably going to get knocked off by snails and then I'll replace it using this method. And maybe someday at the end of the rainbow in that golden future, I won't ever have to do this again. I have been trying to get this mobile bubble algae factory out of my tank for months, ever since I first spotted it when it had only two or three bubbles on it. But every time I would reach in to get it, it would scuttle under some rock somewhere. So finally, I was able to pluck it out and now I am going to clean it up. This is a white-footed hermit crab and they get fairly large. And just anecdotally, there's no science or proof behind this, but I suspect uh, these guys, I have three of them in my tank, of eating Montipora eating nudibranchs because I had them in my tank and I don't have them anymore. Every once in a while there would be a white spot on one of my Montipora. I, I mainly have plating ones and then I would see one of these guys hanging around and then the white spot would disappear. I actually did siphon out two or three nudibranchs when I saw the little critters on top of the Montipora, uh, but other than that uh, I don't, I haven't seen anymore, so maybe these guys are even getting the eggs, I don't know. But anyhow, white-footed hermit crab, give them a try if you're having a problem with Montipora eating nudibranchs. 
You can see I've been plucking away and scrubbing and brushing at this poor little guy. I feel so bad for him. I am trying to be extremely careful not to stress him or um, he did try to climb out of his shell once or twice, which really worries me. So I've been trying to be super, super careful. Um, they're really interesting critters. So this has been a little bit of a different video for me and I hope there are some tips or tricks or products that you might find useful in your reefing life. The easier it is, the more likely we're going to do it. It's a mantra and on a basic level, I'm a little bit lazy, so easy is good. Should I put my sink strainer in? Oh yeah, I should have.